Hi, my name is Jamil, and today in this section we'll be looking at linear equations. Let's review our objectives. Point slope form of the equation of a line, other forms of the equation of a line, using parallel and perpendicular lines, and then using linear models in regression. Let's get started by reviewing the slope formula. The slope m of a line is given by the following. y minus y1 over x minus x1 equals the slope, and this formula is when x1 and y1 is any given point, any fixed point on our given line. If we were to take this equation and multiply both sides by x minus x1, what results is the equation of a line. Let's look at the point slope form. The line with slope m passing the point x1 and y1 has the following equation. y minus y1 equals the slope, or m, times x minus x1. Let's take a look at an example that asks us to use the point slope form. Here we're asked to find the slope-intercept form of a line passing through the following two points, 1, 7, and 3, 3. In order to do this, what we'll need to do is start with our two points, 1, 7, and 3, 3, and find the slope. So here, we have 1, 7, and 3, 3, and the slope is given by the change in y over the change in x, or y2, which in this case is 3, minus y1, which in this case is 7, over x2, which is 3, minus x1, which is 1. Finding the slope, 3 minus 7 is negative 4, and 3 minus 1 is 2, so we know that our slope is negative 2. Now making use of the point-slope form of a line, we have y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. Now our slope is given by the negative 2 value, and now x1 and y1 are given by any fixed point on our line. We have our choice in this situation of using 3, 3 or 1, 7. Both of them will result in the same answer. I'll go ahead and use the point 3, 3. So using 3, 3, we have the point slope form of the line, but we're asked to answer in the slope intercept form, so that means we need to solve this equation for y. To do that, we'll leave the left side alone for a moment, and we'll have y minus 3, and we'll distribute the slope, or the negative 2, into the parentheses, which will give us negative 2x, and then negative 2 times negative 3 is a positive 6. And now adding 3 to both sides, we'll end up with y equals negative 2x plus 9. So the slope-intercept form here is given by y equals negative 2x plus 9. Why don't you go ahead and take a look at this next example on your own. Here you're asked to find the slope-intercept form of the line containing the following points, 2, 3.5, and 6, negative 2.5. Give this one a try and then check back with me when you've completed it. Let's say I did with that example. You were asked to find the slope intercept form of the line containing the following points, 2, 3.5 and 6, negative 2.5. In order to do this, we need to first start by finding the slope. So the slope is equal to the change in the y over the change in x, which in this case is 3.5 minus uh, negative 2.5. And now the change in the x values would be 2 minus the second x value is 6. So working this out, 3.5 minus a negative 2.5 is actually 3.5 plus 2.5. And that's going to be equal to 6. And then on the bottom, we have 2 minus 6, which is negative 4. And that's equal to a negative 3 halves, or as a decimal, negative 1.5. Now, using the point-slope form of a line, we know that y minus the y1 value equals the slope times x minus the x1 value. We found the slope to be negative 1.5. And now we need to choose a point on our line. Again, we have two choices, 2, 3.5, or 6, negative 2.5. I'll choose the first point. So that means our x sub 1 value is 2, so that gives us x minus 2. And our y sub 1 value is 3.5, which gives us y minus 3.5. Now, in order to put this in slope-intercept form, we have to uh, solve it for y. But to do that, we'll leave the left side alone and distribute the slope with a negative 1.5. So distributing that, we have negative 1.5 times x. And then negative 1.5 times a negative 2, which ends up being a positive 3. And then to complete this, we'll add 3.5 to both sides to get y by itself and we end up with y equals negative 1.5x plus 6.5. So that's our final answer. Now that you've seen the slope-intercept form, we should try to use this form to model data. 
Let's take a look at this next example. Here we're told in 1998, there were 47 million people worldwide who had been infected with HIV. At that time, the infection rate was 5.8 million per year. We're asked a couple of questions. The first question, find values M and B so that Y equals MX plus B models the total number of people, Y, in millions that were infected with HIV in the year X, where X equals zero corresponds to 1998, X equals one corresponds to 1999, and so on. Now we were told that there were 47 million people infected in 1998. So we're gonna take that fact and make a point out of it. Now since 1998 corresponds to X equals zero, this is really the point, zero, 47, where the Y values are being measured in millions. So now that gives us the Y intercept of our line. They also told us that the rate was given by the value 5.8. Now that plays the role of the slope. So in order to write the equation of this line using slope intercept form, we'll have y equals mx plus b, where the slope is given by the rate 5.8. So we get y equals 5.8x, I'm sorry, 5.8x plus the y intercept, which we were given by the value 47. So this is the equation of the line that models this data. The second question that we've been asked is to estimate the number of people who may be infected in the year 2010. Now in order to do this, what we first need to do is realize that the year 2010 corresponds to the x value 12. So 2010 gives us uh, x equals 12. And now remember from the last part, we've got the equation of the line that models it. And that equation is y equals 5.8x uh, plus 47. So for this example, we're being asked to substitute in x equals 12. So y, or the number of people infected, will be equal to 5.8 times the value 12 plus 47. Now 5.8 times 12 gives us 69.6 and then plus 47, which gives us the value 116.6. So what we can say is according to our, uh, our model is 116.6 million people will be infected with HIV in the year 2010. The last form of the equation line is the standard form. It's given by AX plus BY equals C. In this form, it's rather easy to find the X and the Y intercepts, and that's very helpful when it comes to graphing a line. Now, another thing we need to look at is two terms called per, uh, parallel and perpendicular. Let's define these. Parallel lines, two distinct non-vertical lines are parallel if and only if they have the same slope. Perpendicular lines, two lines, neither of which is vertical, are perpendicular if and only if their slopes have a product of negative one. Let's take a look at some examples that make use of these terms. Here we're asked to find the equation line satisfying the given conditions, giving it in slope intercept form if possible. The first example is a line that goes through the point negative one, four, and is parallel to the line x plus three y equals five. Now in order to start this, what we should do is take our line that we know is parallel, the x plus three y equals five, and find the slope of that line. So taking this equation and setting it in slope intercept form and solving it for y, first we'll subtract x from both sides and we get three y equals five minus x. And now we'll divide both sides of the equation by three and that gives us that y equals five thirds minus x over three. Now from this equation we can read that the slope of this line is the coefficient of the x which is negative one third. So we know the slope of our parallel line is negative one third, which means the slope of the line we're looking for will be the same, it will also be negative one third. Now using the point slope form of the line, we'll set up y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. And we know that the slope we're looking for is the same as the negative one third we just found. And now using the x sub one value of negative one, we get x minus a negative one, which becomes x plus one, and we get y minus four, and that gives us the equation line in point slope form, but we were asked to give it in slope intercept form, so now, keeping the y minus four the same and distributing the negative one third on the other side, we get negative one third x minus one third, and then the last thing we need to do is add four to both sides, so we get y equals negative one third x, and then we have negative one third plus four, which is really the same as plus 12 thirds. So negative one third plus 12 thirds is positive 11 thirds. So the equation of the line that we're looking for is given by 
y equals negative one-third x plus 11 thirds. Let's take a look at this next example. Here we're asked to find the equation line that goes through the origin and is perpendicular to the line 2x plus y equals negative 6. We'll start this the same way. We'll take the line that we're given as perpendicular and try to find the slope of that line so we can use that result to find the slope of the line we're interested in. Here we're given 2x plus y equals 6 as the perpendicular line. So solving this for y, in other words, subtracting 2x from both sides, we get that the equation of this line is y equals 6 minus 2x. Now since the slope here is given by the coefficient of the x, the slope is negative 2, the slope that we want, or the slope of the perpendicular line, is going to be given by, uh, the slope of the perpendicular, is going to be given by the negative reciprocal, which uh, in this case the negative reciprocal of negative 2 would be negative 1 over negative 2, which turns out to be just positive 1 half. So we know the slope of the line that we want is positive 1 half. Now again, going back to the slope intercept form, y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. We know the slope of the line we want is given by 1 half. We know that a point on our line is given by the origin, and the origin is the value 0, 0, so x1 would be 0 and y1 would be 0. And then to solve this for y, we really just need to rewrite it, since y minus 0 is y, and distributing the 1 half, we get 1 half x, and 1 half times 0 is 0, so we're left with the equation y equals 1 half x. We're now ready to take a look at how to use a, st a scatter diagram. Uh, equations of lines can be very helpful in analyzing data given by scatter diagrams, so let's take a look at this next example. Here we're asked, or we're told, that estimates in Medicare costs, given in billions of dollars, are shown below. X is the year, and Y is the cost during that year. So in 2000, the cost was 236, and remember this is in billions of dollars, so that's 236 billion dollars. 2001, 249 billion dollars. 2002, 264 billion dollars. 2003, 281 billion dollars. 2004, 299 billion dollars. And 2005, 318 billion dollars. We're asked two questions about this data. The first, Make a scatter diagram of the data. Let x equals 0 correspond to 2000, x equals 1 correspond to 2001, and so on. What type of function might model this data? So here, what we have is a scatter diagram, and I've already plotted the points that were given by our chart. You can see that uh, since the points seem to rise at a constant slope, we would anticipate that a linear function would be used in modeling this data. Um, so if we're going to try to find that linear function, what we need to do is choose a couple of points and write the equation. So I'm going to choose the points 0, 236, and 4, 299, and we'll find the slope between these two points. So finding the slope between these two, the change in y would be the second y value, 299, minus the first y value, 236, over the second x value, which is 4, minus the first x value, which is 0. Now, working this out, what we find is that the slope is equal to 15.75. So now we anticipate that the slope of our line will be given by 15.75. We were also given the point 0, 0,236 as one of our data points, so we'll use that as the y-intercept. Making use of the slope-intercept form of a line, the equation of the line that would model this data would be y equals the slope, which is 15.75, times x, plus the y-intercept, which is given by 236. So that's the equation of the line that we think would do a good job modeling this data. Part B now asks us to find the linear function f that models the data. We've just completed this part. It then goes on to ask us to graph f and the data in the same viewing window and interpret the slope m. Now you may remember the last time we saw our scatter diagram, it looked like this. We had plotted our points on a uh, viewing window where the x values range from 0 to 6 and the y values range from 200 to 350. Now what I've done is I've taken the graphing calculator and I've input these data points. As you can see in the list on the calculator, we've uh, recreated the table from the problem. And now we'll go ahead and take a look at the scatter diagram it makes. And you can see the points on the calculator. We've now been asked to go ahead and input the line equation. Uh, so to do that, we'll go to y equals, and we'll type in the equation of the line we found, 15.75x 
plus 236. And then we'll graph that line through our data points. And you can see that this line models our data points fairly well. Um, in the last part, we're asked to use the function f of x to predict Medicare costs in the year 2006. Now, in order to do this, what you need to realize is the year 2006 corresponds to the x value, x equals 6. So using the graphing calculator again, we'll go ahead and find the function, uh, which we have stored in the y1 variable, and we'll evaluate this function at 6. So finding y1 of 6, that gives us the value 330.5. So what that means is that in the year 2006, the Medicare cost will be $330.5 billion. In this section, you've got a chance to take a look at the equations of lines in all their different forms. We've spent a lot of time looking at the point-slope form as well as the slope-intercept form, and we've seen how to use them to model data. You should continue to practice the exercises in your textbook, and I'll see you next time.